The restoration of Gorton Monastery was made possible by the creation of a charitable trust and the work of a lot of dedicated people. But how the trust came about is the story of one family. We lived in a terraced house in Gorton. There were five of us in the family, uh, one sister and four boys. Uh, and we grew up here. I was 12, the eldest, and John was one when Mum died. And she was a great churchgoer, my mum. It was just before my second birthday when she passed away. But from what Anthony and Chris, the next ones up from me, um, picked up on, was uh, they'd definitely go to Mass. <laughs> they'd always be spotless and go to Mass. Anthony and Chris, myself and Paul, we're all altar boys. I think as a boy, it meant a lot to me, and it was it was pivotal in my life. Whether I was saying mass with with a priest, or was in the congregation, or reading at the mass, or whatever I was doing, it was something I felt Im immensely proud of. When it was closed, I found myself parking up outside the church, and did that for many years, just looking at it, thinking. Well, what, you know, the summit could be done, but what do you do? In 1996, Paul made a train journey which took him past the back of the monastery. He saw for himself the result of seven years of neglect. I couldn't believe the dilapidation that had taken place. It looked in a pretty sorry state, really sad. And I came home and said to Elaine, my wife, well, Elaine, we need to try and save the monastery. And um, she said, yes, trying to humour me, I think. Oh, yes, yeah, right. So I first walked into that building in its derelict state, and it was devastating. You know, the hairs on the back of my neck went, I knew it was in a really important place. But uh, it was just so sad, and I just knew I had to try and do something to help. We managed to rent a little house at the back of the monastery um, and we worked from there. We got it clean enough for people to enjoy. It was nice. You take a step back and just have a look at people walking about, and, which is it sort of reinforced everything. The vision for the monastery has had to be very broad in order to generate enough income to keep the building going. But if this monastery can have a new life in the broadest sense and become a spiritual home for the wider community, then that's got to be a very positive thing. When you think about the thousands of people that were being baptised in the church, had been married in the church, prayed in the church, all of their prayers and all of their thinking will be in the fabric of that building. I'm sure of that. It's still very sacred. It was such a special, warm place. And I could never lose that, no matter what it was used for now. Never. Their memories will always be there. Brethren come and brethren go, but that old church will stand while the surrounding houses fall. The gates fall, the business man, the homeless child, and any prostitute, and all within its walls. Inside. The all old hands and love dance freely around the room. You see, your church is much wiser than any mountain, and the only way to 
to heaven is through this door. Priest to born and priest to die, the whole church he employs them for their long and useful lives. To welcome in any vagabond, the pensioner who has a child took his name upon its wall. Voices ring with love, and the magic within the minds is all set free. And the head that bounced three times to form a fountain smiles on them a calm, forgiving. It's the old church, he's much wiser than any mountain And the only way to heaven is through this door